I believe passionately that everyone has a particular God-given ability. It seems to me self-evident that we cannot have capitalism without capital and, very importantly, that the ultimate source of all economic capital is nature's capital. I'm a dangerous person because I mind about things. I think we'd be very foolish to expect that we can just import everything from somewhere else and imagine that that's going to last forever and ever and ever. There is very good evidence indeed that one of the major reasons for this horror in Syria was a drought that lasted for about five or six years, which meant that huge numbers of people in the end had to leave the land. It is baffling, I must say, that in our modern world we have such blind trust in science and technology that we all accept what science tells us about everything, until, that is, it comes to climate science. I think we're going to find, with climate change and everything else, things like global warming and goodness knows what else and the cost of fuel for a start that things are going to become very complicated. As human beings we suffer from an innate tendency to jump to conclusions, to judge people too quickly and to pronounce them failures or heroes without due consideration of the actual facts and ideals of the period. My rainforests project has three main elements. Firstly, to determine how much funding the rainforest countries need to reorientate their economies so that the trees are worth more alive than dead. Why can't we have those curves and arches that express feeling in design? What is wrong with them? Why has everything got to be vertical, straight, unbending, only at right angles, and functional? I find myself born into this particular position. I'm determined to make the most of it. And to do whatever I can to help. And I hope I leave things behind a little bit better than I found them. There is no doubt that we live in an age of unprecedented, and sometimes terrifying, technological advance where the speed of advance so often outstrips the necessary ethical considerations. This was one of those special occasions when I could actually feel the inner appreciation of the beauty of the moment passing like an electric current through the brush in my hand. We have spent the best part of the past century enthusiastically testing the world to utter destruction, not looking closely enough at the long-term impact our actions will have. Fast food may appear to be cheap food and, in the literal sense it often is, but that is because huge social and environmental costs are being excluded from the calculations. Humility is to make a right estimate of oneself. It is no humility for a man to think less of himself than he ought, though it might rather puzzle him to do that. You have to give this much to the Luftwaffe. When it knocked down our buildings it did not replace them with anything more offensive than rubble. We did that. All I'm saying is that there is a price to be paid at the sharp end. Environmentally and everywhere else. For the food that is produced in a particular way. A large number of us have developed a feeling that architects tend to design houses for the approval of fellow architects and critics, not for the tenants. We should be treating, I think, the whole issue of climate change and global warming with a far greater degree of priority than I think is happening now. Something as curious as the monarchy won't survive unless you take account of people's attitudes. After all, if people don't want it, they won't have it. Any difficulties which the world faces today will be as nothing compared to the full effects which global warming will have on the worldwide economy. If your children want to alter society, listen to their reasons and the idealism behind them. Don't crush them with some clever remark straight away.
It is frightening how dependent on drugs we are all becoming and how easy it is for doctors to prescribe them as the universal panacea for our ills. I think we need to recover the depth, the subtlety, the generosity of imagination, the respect for wisdom that so marked Islam in its great ages. To avert disaster, we have not only to teach men to make things but to teach them to have complete moral control over what they make. As technology advances at an alarming pace, the place of drawing remains as valid as ever in the creation of art and architecture. Climate change should be seen as the greatest challenge to face man and treated as a much bigger priority in the United Kingdom. Forests are the world's air conditioning system the lungs of the planet and we are on the verge of switching it off. The whole imposing edifice of modern medicine is like the celebrated Tower of Pisa, slightly off balance. We don't, in a sensible world, want to hand on an increasingly dysfunctional world to our grandchildren. I was totally absorbed. I was in another world, or another dimension, all sense of time evaporated. The less people know about what is really going on, the easier it is to wield power and authority. There's nothing like a jolly good disaster to get people to start doing something. If you chuck away too many things, you end up discovering there was value in them. The price of apparently cheap food is costing nothing less than the earth. I believe passionately that everyone has a particular God-given ability. I sometimes wonder if two-thirds of the globe is covered in red carpet. I learned the way a monkey learns, by watching its parents. To get the best results you must talk to your vegetables. All the time I feel I must justify my existence. Conservation must become before recreation. Your greatest achievement is to love me. Be neither too remote nor too familiar. Business is recognizing the role it can play in combating climate change. Forests are in fact the world's air conditioning system the very lungs of the planet and help to store the largest body of fresh water on the planet, essential to produce food for our planet's growing population. If English is spoken in heaven, God undoubtedly employs Cranmer as his speechwriter. The world's forests need to be seen for what they are, giant global utilities, providing essential public services to humanity on a vast scale. The simple fact is that the world is not paying for the services the forests provide.